Welcome to the Bethany Covenant Church Sermon Podcast. We are a multi-generational community in Berlin, Connecticut. Our services are held Sundays at 9.30 a.m., and you can find out more about us at www.bethanycovenant.org. Good morning, Bethany family. Listen to the Word of God. From Matthew chapter 11, beginning in verse 28, Jesus is speaking. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. From the Apostle Peter's first letter in chapter 3, beginning in verse 15. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give you the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. From Titus chapter 3, 1 and 2. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always be gentle toward everyone. And finally, from our core text in this series, Galatians 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is, among other things, gentleness. Please pray with me. Holy Father, give us ears to hear, minds to understand, hearts to believe, and lives to do what you bring to us today from your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. There are eight verses in the 20th chapter of Matthew's gospel that are somewhat startling. Let me paraphrase them for you. A mother comes up to Jesus to speak with him about her two boys. She says, Jesus, do you know what you have here? These are my boys, good boys. They have potential to be great leaders. I'm sure you've seen that in them already. After all, they're smart enough to have followed you. Jesus, let's talk. These boys of mine could be really big helpers for you. When you finally get all ready to set up your kingdom, how about putting my boys on either side of you? You know, kind of as your right and left hand man. Can't you see this loving, assertive, caring, controlling, my boys are the best mom, talking with Jesus? These boys were great in their mother's eyes. Jesus turns to this mother's boys, James and John, the sons of thunder, which apparently was their mother's name. They are embarrassed. They are red-faced. And Jesus asks them, can you do what I'm about to do? Well-trained by their mother, they respond, Yes, we'll do anything you ask. We'll go where you want us to go. We'll say what you want us to say. We'll do what you want us to do. We'll be what you want us to be. In essence, they could have said, Look, we've had to go, say, do, and be what mother wanted all our lives. So we can go, say, do, and be for you, too. Greatness in God's eyes is something most people would like to achieve. Do something great for God. Have success with God. Have authority in God's name. Exercise God's leadership in life. What mother hasn't wanted that for their children? What what sons and daughters haven't wanted that for themselves? In contrast to this story of James and John, consider Booker T. Washington who at the time was president of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. A white woman one day saw him walking down the street. She didn't recognize him. And so she yelled across the street, hey boy, come over here and chop some wood. Washington came over to her, took off his coat, chopped the wood, carried it into the house, and then left. A servant girl, recognized Booker and told her mistress after he had left. The woman was horrified and went to apologize to Mr. Washington. The story is told that he replied to her with these words, 
Madam, it's entirely all right. I delight to do favors for my friends. Booker T. Washington called her friend, not because she had been friendly, but because it was his view toward people and she was included. This view of friendship is Christian love. The fruit of the spirit is love and gentleness is love's leadership style. Jesus made that clear with James and John and in the hearing of their thunder mother, as well as the other disciples Jesus had chosen when he said later in Matthew 20, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. Now the reality is, as in all gardens, there is a weed. The weed to gentleness is achieved greatness. That is a greatness that is used to make me recognized, honored, and served. Jesus referred to the weed as the leadership style of rulers when he said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. The emphasis in much leadership is on the authority, control, and manipulation, sometimes masked as assertiveness, which frankly is a bad use of that word. Philip Keller in his book, A Gardener Looks at the Fruit of the Spirit, shows the contrast of the world's style of leadership and the style of Jesus. I quote him, in the garden of our lives, there springs up a mixed crop of fruit and weeds. On the one hand, there are places where pride, self-assurance, arrogance, self-indulgence, and abrasive aggressiveness mark our behavior. These often tend to almost choke out completely the gentle fruits of God's gracious spirit. Unless we keep clearly in view the life and character of Christ, we will succumb to the eternal temptation of living like our contemporaries, insisting on our rights, demanding our pound of flesh, stepping on anyone who trespasses against us, while all the time pushing for prominence and recognition. This is the world's way. Christ calls us to tread in his footsteps. He tells us to deny ourselves daily and give up our rights to ourselves. He asks us, to take up our cross continuously, that which cuts diametrically across my selfish self-interest, crossing out the great I in my life to produce peace." End of quote. If we're honest, when we look at our culture, Jesus' way is frankly not very appealing. Jesus' way goes against the grain of life as we know it. Jesus' way is not glamorous or romantic, and Jesus' way is certainly not easy. Too often we Christian folk, especially in the Protestant, pietistic, and evangelical traditions, have stopped short of being truly Christian. We certainly express submission to Christ, but we have not done well with living into the leadership style of the one we call our Lord. Remember again what Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, Matthew 20, 28. And doesn't the scripture tell us by the Holy Spirit we are to become like him, live like him, lead like him? In other words, when we lead as Christians, we are to lead like Jesus, we are to lead by serving. There's also an artificial fruit to gentleness, Two words very similar to each other that have drastically changed since they were first uttered. Those words, gentleness and meekness. In our day, both of these words are often linked with a third word, weakness. I remember the original Superman, George Reeves. It was a black and white television program that came on after school was dismissed and I would run home to watch The Man of Steel. I loved the opening lines. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to reach tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Superman, strange visitor from another planet who could change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel with his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, 
a mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way, I would stand in front of the TV and say it with the announcer. All this bravado disguised as a mild-mannered reporter, hardly like any of today's reporters, but Clark Kent was more than mild-mannered. He was klutzy, he was ignorant, he was naive, but I knew all along that this was a disguise. Meekness, gentleness, they were a cover. Clark Kent, on the surface, appeared to be no threat and of no consequence to anyone. So what has happened to meekness and gentleness? Jesus said, blessed are the meek. The Bible calls us to the character trait of gentleness. Did Jesus have the same picture of meek as most of us do? Has the meaning of meek and gentleness changed since Jesus' day? Well, the answer to the first question is no. Jesus does not have the same picture as we do. And the second question is yes. The meaning of these words as understand by most has changed. In the Hebrew language, the word is anah, translated meekness, humility, gentleness, and lowly. From the Psalms we read, God hears the desires of the anah, the humble, the meek, the lowly. The anah in Psalms, humble, meek, and lowly people shall eat and be satisfied because of God. God rises in judgment to save the anah, the meek, the humble, the gentle of the earth, Psalm 25. It is God's promise that the Anah, the meek, will inherit the earth, Matthew 5, 5. Essentially, the thought of the Hebrews was that a meek person obediently accepted God's guidance, accepted whatever God sent in the certainty that God's way is always best and that all things would work out for the best. Gentleness and meekness were seen as a strength, a strength of faith in God and God's ways. This sense of gentleness and meekness as a strength was also true in the Greek language. In the Greek, one of the words is praus, which literally means the means between extremes. Aristotle put it this way, praus, meekness, gentleness, was that area of human behavior and emotion that was between excessive anger on the one hand and angerlessness on the other, end of quote. If a person was truly gentle or meek, they were neither flying off the handle nor unable to know how to be angry. An example of prowess was in the domesticating of a wild animal. The strength and stamina of that animal were not removed but the focus and the direction of that animal became now under control. Jesus exercised prowess throughout his life. Jesus got angry when people displaced women and Gentiles from worship in the temple. Jesus didn't get angry when they spit on him, beat him, and even crucified him. Nuclear power is another example of prowess. A nuclear bomb is out of control, it's destructive, it's random. A nuclear power plant is controlled, channeled, energy producing. And God is the ultimate example of prowess. He could act with the most stern severity at our disobedience, but he doesn't. God has every right to instantly judge and punish us, but instead, God continues to pursue us with his love drawing us to himself and giving us the Holy Spirit to help transform us to be more like his son, Jesus, the gentle one. Why is it then that so many Christians judge and punish with words and actions those who oppose? Why is it then that we, we who claim Christ as Lord, so easily become judges of others rather than lovers of them? Why is it then that we, we who claim Christ as Lord so easily punish others with their words, their behavior, rather than show them forgiveness. Is Jesus truly our Lord? 
or has our warped theology become our Lord? Is Jesus truly our Lord or has our view of acceptable behavior become Lord? Is Jesus truly our Lord or have we become our own Lord? There's tremendous power in the church of Jesus Christ and it has been sadly abused by people for whom Jesus Christ is not truly Lord. It has become maligned by people so that the world rejects the church and as a result rejects God, his son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and reject the Bible. It's tragic. The church has often forgotten that she is the bride of Jesus Christ. She, the bride of Christ, is to follow him. She, the bride of Christ, is to serve him. Jesus, the bride of Christ, most miraculously, miraculously is to become like him. Men, I speak to you. Please listen. There's been a rising and renewed teaching on the warrior qualities of the Christian man. It is rightly revealed that this is the nature of man, to protect and to defend. The examples most often raised are David, Peter, and Paul. But there is a flawed thinking and teaching in this trend. David, Peter, and Paul are men like us. They are not our examples. God has given us our example. It is our Lord. It is Jesus the Christ. There is no other. And Jesus in his own words is gentle and humble of heart. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Jesus has the capacity to do battle. But in his own words, Jesus said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 3, 17. The apostle Paul tells us why Jesus was like this. He writes in Philippians 2, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Jesus came to serve. That's the leadership style of his kingdom. So what can we do to cultivate genuine gentleness? Two things. We cultivate genuine gentleness through service. F.B. Meyer wrote, quote, I used to think that God's gifts were on the shelves one above the other, and that the taller we grew in Christian character, the easier we could reach them. Now I find that God's gifts are on the shelves one beneath the other. And it is, it is not a question of growing taller, but of stooping lower. And that we have got to do down, that, that we have got to go down, always down, to get his best gifts. We cultivate genuine gentleness through service, which means stooping. Secondly, we ultimately cultivate genuine gentleness through imitating Jesus, that is, becoming like him. As he submitted to his Father's will and came to serve us salvation, we are to submit to his will and go win the lost and help the hurting. Our job is not to correct people, but to love them, to set an example for them. Our job is not to make people like us, but to introduce and disciple them for Jesus. Our job is to baptize them in Jesus, helping them to fully identify with him, to surrender their lives to him. I close with this picture of a mother lion and her cub. The cub is not gentle, but it is powerless when compared to the mother. The lioness is gentle, capable of great power, but choosing to gently raise her cub. In Christ, we are the cub. We are to submit to him, be, as Ali said, all in with him. Because of Christ, we become the lioness. Let us be gentle and raise up the cubs around us his way. Pray with me. Gentle Father, by your Holy Spirit, make us a gentle people both as leaders for and as followers of your son, Jesus Christ. A thought for your day. 
from Philippians 4, 4 to 5. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. God's blessing be upon you. Stay safe. Stay well. You are loved. Amen.